Salut tout le monde, bienvenue sur les tutos de 8 ou bienvenue sur cette chaîne de retour pour une nouvelle saison. Je suis vraiment ravi de vous retrouver, j'espère que vous aussi vous êtes content de revenir dans ce studio pour apprendre l'anglais, pour réapprendre l'anglais, pour euh, ensemble qu'on prenne confiance et qu'on réussisse à progresser de manière visible et efficace dans cette magnifique langue. Je suis Wito, votre prof d'anglais préféré, j'espère. En tout cas, je suis ravi d'être là et je vous propose aujourd'hui un épisode spécial sur des situations du quotidien. Euh, du style des anniversaires, quand quelqu'un vous annonce euh, euh, qu'il va se marier, euh, quand quelqu'un est malade, euh, bref, plein de situations comme ça. Ben, Qu'est-ce qu'on dit dans ces cas-là Quelles sont les phrases en anglais utiles euh, que les anglais, les américains, les anglophones en général disent dans des situations comme celle-là, parfois bah, on ne sait pas quoi dire et je pense que c'est important de les connaître. Alors c'est parti, let's jump right in English today No French, just English, but simple English, easy to understand. Right, so when someone's birthday is coming, what do you say? Of course, you say happy birthday. Happy birthday. Don't forget the th, happy birthday. One phrase that I really like is enjoy your special day. Okay, you want to write a message on social media, you can easily say, enjoy your special day. Happy birthday, mate. Enjoy your special day. Um, if you meet your friend and you cheer, you cheer to his or her birthday, you can say, I wish you many more. I wish you many more years, okay? I wish you many more. Or cheers to another year. Happy birthday, my friend. Cheers to another year. Now, not so good news. Um, someone you know feels really unwell. Someone you know may be sick. Uh, what do you say then? If one of your friends has gone to the hospital, has not returned, doesn't feel well. What do you say? Well, first thing you can say is, I hope you are feeling better soon. I hope, hope you're feeling better soon. Or you can say, get well soon. Get well soon. It's, it's quicker and it's very efficient. Get well soon. I wish you a speedy recovery. That's when it's good. I wish you a speedy recovery. Um, you can also say, hang in there. This one is perfect. Hang in there and you'll be back on your feet very soon. Or perhaps you would like to send a message. Uh, perhaps you want to text your, your, the person um, or leave, leave a comment on social media and say, um, I'm sending you Um, all the good vibes, um, positive energy for a quick recovery. That would sound, to me at least, that would sound um, like a, a good message. All right, so this is kind of a positive message to someone who's not feeling very well, who's been to the hospital and uh, who needs time to recover. And you're there as a friend or family member to Uh, express your empathy. Now, another even sadder news. Um, sometimes all, all news are not good news and people um, announce uh, that one of their relatives has died. Well, in that case, the most common phrases are Um, I'm so sorry for your loss. This one is really appropriate. I'm so sorry for your loss. Or perhaps more plainly, my condolences. Um, you can also say my thoughts. Perhaps if you are religious, you could say my thoughts and prayers. Or just my thoughts 
are with you and your family during this um, tough time. If you meet the person and you want to know how they're feeling, of course, you know that they are um, probably feeling miserable. However, you would like to know how they are. So one of the questions you may want to ask is, how are you holding on? So, hello, Peter, how are you holding on? Um, if you want to help them, or at least offer your help, you could say, um, if you need anything, just let me know. I'm there for you. Um, let me know if I can help. Okay, that's great. All right, now, more joyful and satisfying news. Someone uh, you know has got their degree. That's great. Uh, they passed their, you know, their tests. Um, so you want to congratulate them. So first thing first, congratulations. Uh, you deserve it. You deserve it. Uh, way to go. Way to go. Um, you did it. You did it. I'm so proud of you. If you know the person really well, you can say, I'm so proud of you. You did it. Or you have earned it. You've earned it. Um, or you've, you've earned it. It's time to celebrate. It's time to celebrate. And as graduation has to do with future things, like new opportunities, maybe having a new job, you could say uh, to someone um, something like, um, best of luck. Uh, best of luck on whatever comes next. That sounds good. Best of luck on whatever comes next. Now, as I said earlier, getting a degree sometimes leads to getting a new job. So, a friend of yours just got a new job. What do you say to him or her? Well, congrats. Congrats. Congrats on the new job. Um, wishing you all the best in your new role. You're, you're made for this job. I'm, I'm sure you'll crush it. I'm sure you will crush it. Um, I'm so excited. Oh, you'll crush it. I'm sure um, you will crush it, meaning you will succeed. You will be successful. So all this positive energy that you share with someone who's got a new job. What's the next step? Some people get a new job and then they earn enough money to get a new place. Perhaps rent a new flat or a new house, even maybe buy a house or an apartment. And um, when you do so, you generally um, invite friends over to celebrate. And that's called a housewarming party. When you throw a party with, you know, all your friends and family to celebrate um, your new place, your new apartment uh, or your new house. Um, so if you were ever invited to such uh, cool celebrations, uh, here are some um, useful phrases that you can use. Um, congrats, congratulations on your new home. I'm, uh, I wish you lots of happiness in your new home. So when you drink with your friends and when you cheer, uh, one of the cool phrases to use is here's to, here's to. So here's to your new place. Looks like a fresh start. Here's to your new place. Cheers. And if you are curious about what your friend is going, or how your friend is going to arrange his or her new apartment. You could say, oh, well, I can't wait to see um, what you're going to do with the new space. Now, next <laughs> potential step would be perhaps to meet someone. And um, people, some people, like to get married. I know it's a strange idea, but some people, well, like to get married. And they are, most of them, very happy to announce it. So when you uh, 
hear that people you know are going to get married, then what should you say? So it's usually very good news. So you could say, oh, wow, great news. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you both. Oh, God, you two are perfect for each other. You two are perfect for each other. I'm so glad that you are getting married. Um, or something like, all right, best wishes for, for the big day. Um, I would suggest, um, as a teacher, try to find simple words. Like, sometimes people use complicated phrases that um, perhaps lose a bit of authenticity. I would strongly advise you to use, you know, normal language, uh, but yet very um, uh, authentic and meaningful. All right. What's the next step? Some people, not everybody, but some people after they get married, think about having children. And chances are that people you know have one day announced a new baby. What do you say when someone do so? Well, it's a happy, happy news. These are the news that I love to hear the most. When someone's getting a baby, I'm always very excited for them. Um, so perhaps the, one of the first questions you may want to ask is, all right, congratulations. When is the baby due? When is the baby due? Have you decided on a name yet? Have you picked up a name yet? Some parents want to share the name. Some of them want to keep it um, as a surprise. But, you know, you can ask, all right? You can ask. And once the baby's there, well, what do you say? <laughs> Even though the baby might not be so cute, you will probably say something like, oh, what a cute baby. Um, he's so adorable. She's such an adorable little creature. If you speak directly to the baby, you can say, welcome, welcome to the world. Welcome to the world, little one, um, as a, a welcoming message. And lastly, um, Let's um, make a giant leap um, on time. When your career is done, it's time for retirement. What do you say to someone who's uh, retiring? Well, once again, I think you should praise them. Something like, congratulations on your retirement. Um, well, it's well-deserved. It's well-deserved. You deserve it. Um, maybe you could say, enjoy. Um, all right, John, enjoy the next chapter of your life. That sounds good. Enjoy the next chapter of your life. Uh, cheers, to, cheers to a new chapter. Um, cheers to a new chapter. And please enjoy every minute of it. Okay, that's about it. I'm going to switch to French now. Je passe en français, tout d'un coup. Um, toutes ces phrases, comme je vous l'ai dit dans l'épisode, elles, elles ont un point commun. Elles, 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 pour la plupart d'entre elles, elles montrent l'empathie que vous avez pour les gens qui vous entourent. Et je pense qu'il est intéressant de lister ces phrases. Pas forcément de les apprendre par cœur, ça ne sert pas à grand-chose. Mais je pense que pour chacune des situations, ça peut être pas mal d'en choisir euh, voilà, une ou deux et d'être euh, éventuellement prêt à les utiliser le moment venu. C'est vrai que c'est pas tous les jours qu'on nous annonce ce genre de choses, mais c'est quand même assez courant et ça fait partie des différentes étapes de la vie. Euh, donc, faites une liste. Dans cette liste-là que vous aurez copiée, faites une sélection des expressions qui vous semblent les plus... Oh, celles qui vous correspondent le mieux. Entraînez-vous à les dire à voix haute, ça c'est très important, donc vous pouvez faire des pauses sur la vidéo et écouter, répéter, ralentir éventuellement euh, sur YouTube, hein, vous pouvez ralentir le débit euh, et faites-le vraiment à voix haute quand vous isolez-vous dans une pièce, vous êtes tranquille, et vraiment dites-les 
euh, à voix haute pour vous entraîner à les avoir en bouche jusqu'à ce que bah, l'occasion voilà, se présente et que vous puissiez euh, réagir et avoir le bon mot au bon moment. C'est souvent ce qui est difficile dans une langue étrangère, c'est que euh, on cherche ces mots et parfois ce qu'on dit n'est pas à l'image de ce qu'on voudrait dire. Donc l'idée de cette vidéo, c'est justement d'essayer de vous donner des pistes, euh, de prévoir en fait des situations qui certes ne sont pas des situations extrêmement courantes, mais malgré tout, elles sont quand même quotidiennes et, euh, et elles peuvent survenir à n'importe quel moment de la vie. Voilà, merci beaucoup d'avoir suivi cet épisode. J'étais vraiment ravi d'avoir partagé ça avec vous. J'espère que euh, ça vous a plu. Laissez un pouce bleu comme d'habitude. Abonnez-vous à la chaîne des tutos de Rito. Parlez des tutos de Rito à vos amis, à vos collègues de boulot, euh, à vos élèves si vous êtes enseignant, si vous êtes dans des assos. Euh, voilà, le bouche à oreille, c'est quand même ce qui fonctionne le mieux. En 2024, c'est dur à dire, mais c'est vrai. Le fait que vous en parliez, ça m'aide beaucoup. Je vous dis à très bientôt et je vous souhaite une excellente journée. Have a great day and you take care. Bye.